Hello and welcome to episode 220 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is February 12th, 2024. And today I'm wearing two fairly old pieces and they're both so old that they don't have a Ravelry page. And they're both um, from the time that I used to work for the German yarn company Wolle Rödel, which doesn't really exist anymore. Um, they were the company was bought by a different company and they still have some of the yarns so and these were the two my two favorite yarns in that company so the um, the shawl is knit from Rigato and um, the pullover was knit out of soft merino and I think they're both available still and the Rigato that was a mix of wool and acrylic and you can get that as Rigato with the name Volerödel on it but there's also the same yarn um, with the Rico name, which I can never remember. I think they basically have the same yarn with two different names um, because of the different uh, brand names on it. Anyway, so the um, scarf was a pattern that was um, published by Wollerödel, but this was not a shop window display as far as I remember. For the shop window displays, we had to use the same color as the brochure had, but I used a different color. So it was not um, a shop display, a shop window display piece. <laughs> but I still got the yarn from the company in exchange for um, leaving the piece in the shop for at least three months for it to be displayed in the shop so people could see what the pattern looked like knit up and what the yarn looked like and the pattern in the brochure was called something like cardigan shawl so it's supposed to be a mix between a shawl and or rather a vest or, or a jacket or something so i was supposed to knit one armhole so basically this side sort of looks like a vest and this side looks like a shawl i thought it was a bit weird um that one arm would be cold and the other would be warm but for me to get the yarn or for the company to pay for the yarn I had to knit exactly as per pattern so that's what I did and actually what I found out later when I started wearing the shawl more is that um, one good way of using this hole is to just push one half of the shawl through this hole and that really makes it really nice to wear because now they're not flopping away, it, it can't slide down. So I really like wearing it like this. And then depending on how I place the hole, it'll look different and it'll be, I think it's a bit, a little less obvious if I pull it down like this and both ends are still long enough um, to sit like this. And I can also pull it down a little bit, but that will make the hole more obvious again so um, yeah so that's when you knit a shawl <laughs> with one big hole at in yeah some way into the into the shawl what I liked was the way the um, lace pattern or the eyelets were placed you got um, this kind of um, it was knit on the bias I think is what it's called so it um, you don't have like right angles from the bottom of the shawl to the sides of the shawl but it's sort of um, sideways and I quite like it so the stripes sort of run not horizontal but like uh, on an angle and then with the eyelets you get different lines so that was something that I quite liked and the Rigato is a yarn that has um, it's made of different colors and creates stripes um, but it's a lot thicker than than sock yarn I think uh, the recommended needle is seven to eight millimeters so fairly big needles yeah so that's the shawl and as I'm st um, standing I can show you the pullover the bottom part is just a plain black pullover and sleeves as well but then it has this beautiful yoke, which is why I wanted to knit the pullover. That was not a pattern by Wollerudel. That was a pattern that I found in some, some other magazine or something. And um, the thing that interested me most was the fact that it actually used black, grey and red. Whereas all the 
um, pullovers with those kind of colored yokes that I knit as a young person, they were all knit in brown colors. And I don't like brown, but everybody was using brown. So I also had a brown pullover like this um, that we used to call Norwegian pullovers. I'm not really sure that's what they are. Maybe they're more Icelandic. I don't know. But um, yeah, I was so um, happy to see a pullover like that with black, gray and white and red that I um, knit it straight away. And this pullover is also an example for if things go wrong that you can still wear your things. <laughs> so what went wrong with this pullover? After I knit it, I was really happy. I wore, I washed it and I wore it and then I washed it again and I put other things into the machine as well because this yarn, the soft merino is machine washable and I knew I wasn't washing the pullover for the first time, maybe not even the second time, maybe it was the third or fourth time, I don't remember. And I knew that the black and the red weren't bleeding because the white was still white. So I put other things in and I never expected the light, like turquoise greeny vest that I put in that was out of cotton, that that would bleed. So now the pullover has some green spots where I use light colors. They're not too many. Here's some, some color and also here. So the, at first, when I pull it out of the washing machine, I was so shocked. But then I let it dry, I thought about it, and then I decided I'll wear it anyway. I don't mind. So if people notice, they may notice. So far, nobody has, has asked me about those spots. I don't really think people notice them a lot. And I don't mind. I still love the pullover. I still love the, um, the pattern. And it's, it's a pure wool. It's... Um, already pilling quite a bit because it's a soft yarn so soft yarn tends to pull but I think it's not too bad considering that I've had the pullover for at least 10 years and I love wearing it so um yeah so these are my oldies but goodies <laughs> that I'm wearing today um okay then on to finished objects I have one finished object today and these are the pink banana socks you won't be surprised um I have them on these nice blockers that you can't see now that I uh, was gifted some time ago so uh, really happy to use them um, it's the first sock blockers that are sort of special in that way or with these cutouts that I have and I really like them um, so they're not for one shoe size but for several shoe sizes but as these are banana socks without a heel the size doesn't matter and I can just um, I could put any banana sock on here and um, you can see that for these sizes the leg is fairly long so even bigger feet would fit in here and they would still have a bit of a leg and um, yeah the colors are really came out differently the way I love so I have one pink toe and I have one yellow and blue toe and then the colors sort of um, uh, take turns yeah, so there's always a different color on the other sock. I really like that. Really happy for them to be done. And I think last week I said I was done with banana socks, but it's possible I wasn't quite done yet. Um, you'll hear about that later. By the way, I was using 150 gram ball of yarn of eight ply sock yarn, which is like two strands of fingering weight yarn held together. And um, I used a little over 100 grams. So I could make a third sock that was almost as long as this one. So the yarn really goes a long way. That's my finished object for today. Then on to works in progress. And I'll start with the other socks that I'm knitting. And I continued knitting on the Colorwork socks um, that I'm knitting out of the book Socks Look. And I just added a few more uh, pattern repeats and I think I'm at the last pattern repeat where I use the blue and the gray and then I'll get to the part um, where I knit the purple and the blue yarn and after that I can do the toe. So basically I'm almost done and here the yellow stripes are the difference between the two socks so that's quite fun and uh, yeah I'll see what kind of 
toe I get. I'm pretty sure there won't be any purple in the toe because the purple in the heel was later. So it might be a completely blue or turquoise toe. See about that. Hope to have that finished next week. And the other sock that I started last week is the show business, showbiz sock that I'm knitting out of that color for my sister. And as this is a fairly simple, just stockinette, no pattern sock, I added quite a bit, I think, from last week. You can now see the pattern, no, not the pattern repeat, the color repeat. So, um, yeah, it's not too boring, so there's always a little bit going on. But honestly, I'm not really <laughs> watching my knitting when I'm knitting this. I usually knit on this when I'm looking uh, either at a screen or at a book or at some people or whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, my sister is coming back today, so I should see her sometime this week so she can try it on so I can decide when to start the toe. And that's it for socks at the moment. My next sock yarn project is the little uh, baby cardigan that I'm knitting as part of the pattern battle and I completed one sleeve. So the sleeve now kind of shows the, the um, color the way it would be in a sock. I think these are fewer stitches than a, than a usual sock but still now you can see those stripes in a proper uh, repeat because this is actually one repeat from here to here because there's always two dark gray stripes so um, from one to the other is one pattern repeat and as I have another uh, gray uh, stripe in this sleeve it means that the second sleeve will start about here and then there should be two dark gray stripes in this in the other sleeve but in a slightly different position maybe this could be be in the same position but with the other dark gray here with the second sleeve we'll see haven't started it yet um, but that's the next thing that I'm going to do on this cardigan and then I had started the on target hat by Sarah Shira the designer who designs the gnomes which I'm not showing today <laughs> wasn't on purpose I just felt like having the little animal sitting there today. Yeah, I added some more stripes to this um, beret, this kind of hat that sort of goes wide at the widest point. So now you can sort of see what kind of hat this is going to be. And then with the decreases, this is going to close up here. I have now knit all the colors, color one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm back to color one. And I've already started color two. I just realized. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is what the colors look like. Really happy with um, the way the colors come out. Really like the fact that with this color, there's both green and gray in the yarn. So I think this is the bit where there's no color here. <laughs> but if you look here, I think it sort of makes sense to use those five colors together. And then um, there's again a little bit of color in the color too. But depending on where you look, um, oh, it's good to see. Yeah, so this is the part where there wasn't any color here, but there's color in that stripe up here. And I've already done the first round of decreases. So now that I'm um, that I've finished the straight part, it's now going into the decreases, and um, I've I did the first round of decreases. <laughs> So uh, yeah, let's see how that progresses. Um, so that's the hat and then we're done with the little project. Then I'll um, come to the either bigger projects or rather, oh, there's quite a few of non sock yarn projects. And the first one is the Geo Gradient shawl. And again, I managed to knit one stripe. So it's, I think it's a quite, it's quite a good um, goal for me to, to knit one of those stripes so at the beginning of the week I can concentrate and I'll try and get the dip stitches and the row back done and then the four rounds four rows of stockinette I can just do whenever I feel like some uh, knitting without thinking 
brainless knitting. <laughs> so this is what my edge looks like now. So I have um, only have those tiny triangles in the first color here, but now I have a full like square-like pattern there. And then the second color was the first full square, and this is going to be one here. And now I have to knit the next stripe with the dark gray and there after I've done the first two rows I'll have to make a decision whether to do the I chord if I do the I chord which color or whether I'm going to finish the stripe and then do some more dip stitches in black and then I'll definitely do the I chord in black so that's where I'm at with this so if I keep knitting a stripe a week this could be done like in either next week or in two weeks time I think I want the full stripe, so maybe two or maybe three weeks time. I don't know how long the cast off is going to take with the iCock cast off. So um, yeah, but still three weeks time seems like uh, manageable. So that's the Geo Gradient out of the Alpaca Sock Yarn by Hansa Farm. And then my next Hansa Farm pro project is the uh, Remember Cow by Nathan Taylor knit in double knitting technique and I don't remember how much I added but I remember I did add quite a few rounds so there are more of those beautiful flowers appearing and I'm still not finished with this huge one so looking forward to getting this done that could be my goal for <laughs> the next time I show the project to you I can try and make sure that that is done so that would give me um, something to to gauge my progress by so this one was done this big one but this huge one still isn't um, yeah really happy with putting beads in the middle of the uh, flowers and still enjoying the knitting and love the yarn this is the alpaca silk yarn by Hansa farm and it's such a nice yarn love it so that is that and then <laughs> I um, I did not crochet on the summer pullover um, just didn't get around to doing that I'll try and make sure I'll do it this week but I crocheted on the winter pullover the whispering pines one and I put it on a hanger today to show you so I, it's easier to hold I finished this the first sleeve so just added two more rounds and decided that's it and cut the yarn and then I had to figure out how to start the second sleeve so I had to make sure that I picked up or that I crocheted the same number of stitches over this straight bit which uh, were the sort of short rows that made the back longer than the front and uh, it worked out beautifully I already did like half the decreases and then I ran out of I didn't run out of yarn but this this ball of yarn was uh, at its end so now I've already crocheted 250 gram balls of yarn into this pullover so it's going to be fairly heavy but it's going to be really nice and warm so I'm looking forward to getting this finished still takes a bit of time but this second sleeve because I'm just crocheting and I don't have to try it on every other round uh, seems to go a lot quicker and as soon as I've finished the sleeve and I've done the first two rounds on the body then it's just crocheting down it's just staying in pattern no decreases or increases that should be fairly simple yep it'll take some time and a lot of yarn but it should be fairly simple so that's a pullover then the skirt I continued knitting on the um, even star shawl skirt that I am um, knitting and it felt like I knit quite a lot but when I compared it to what I showed you last week it's like I only did three rounds or something <laughs> or four maybe four I don't know but it seems so, like so little that I decided for it to make sense to show it to you I put a long cable in so you can see the size of it a bit better than the last times so again this is the pattern that I'm knitting at the moment so there are two like columns of lace yarn next to each other and then a column of 
a twisted rib pattern and that's what's slowing me down so much. I'm not very fond of knitting twisted stitches. I like the way they look, I just don't like making them. And because I have to knit them every round, even in the in-between rounds, it just seems to take forever to finish a round. But just to give you a look at the whole skirt. So as it's supposed to be a round shawl, this is going to be a really round skirt. And um, yeah, I, I quite like the way it looks. So this is what it looks like when I hold it as a skirt. And you can see it's going to be a really wide one. Um, I'm so looking forward to wearing this. But I know it's going to take quite some time. So I was thinking of maybe showing it to you next once I finished this um, bit. So I've done two repeats and there have to be six repeats and it'll always look the same, just a bit longer. So I'm not quite sure whether I should bring it every time or just try and finish this part of the pattern. Don't know yet, we'll see. So that is the skirt. And now to my first new project of the week. And I have to admit that I cast on two new projects, even though I only finished one, um, but one of them is tiny, but not this one. The first uh, new project is a fairly big one. And um, the yarn I'm using is this one. And this cone I bought many years ago in Hamburg in the um, Hamburger Wollfabrik, which means Hamburg, uh, Hamburg's yarn factory. Yeah, it's wool or yarn factory. And uh, that they have a shop that's sort of part of the factory and it's not a normal yarn shop where you get normal finished yarn, but what they have, they have lots and lots and lots of those cones and they all have one str thin strand of some sort of yarn. So this was on one cone and then this was on one of, of an, on another cone and then that was on a cone and I chose five different cones and I said that I wanted one of the yarns doubled so this strand the light red one I have two strands that are the same and then I have one light yellow one dark yellow one orange and one dark red so I said I wanted a yarn made out of these st six strands and what they do is they um, take those six cones and then they take all the yarns together and then they put it on a, on a different cone. And you have to buy at least 200 grams. So with the other yarn that I chose that day, I picked, um, I chose to have 200 grams of a turquoise um, yarn that I knit into a shawl. And, um, but with this, I said I wanted 500 grams because originally I wanted to knit a pullover. And after I bought it, I knit a swatch and then I couldn't make up my mind what to do. So I kept it lying around, standing around at home, couldn't make up my mind what to do. But then Nicolor, who's Nicola Susan, who does fantastic designs, she designed a dress. And some friends of mine decided they wanted to knit the dress and they asked around if other people wanted to join in. And then I decided, yeah, I'd love to have another knitted dress. I love knitted and crocheted dresses. And when I started thinking about which yarn to use, I remembered this cone. So I said, this is going to be this dress. So I have no idea how long the dress is going to be because I have no idea what yardage I have on this cone. Um, I didn't really know which needle to use, but I thought, well, I'll just go with a four millimeter needle, which is my favorite needle. And this is one of Nicolas um, maximum freedom patterns. So it doesn't matter what yarn you use, what needle you use, you can use whatever gauge you like. Then you have to measure yourself. You start with six stitches and then you knit the back neck bit. And then when you reach a certain size, you cast on some more stitches and then you start knitting in the round. So this is the back of my dress and you can see there's some, um, the black markers are for the raglan lines that raglan increases, but there are also two more increased lines in between. And these will continue down the whole dress. And then this side is the front of my dress, which is a lot shorter than the back because 
it has a nice round um, neckline and um, yeah and now I'm knitting the upper part of my dress and then at some point um, you uh, put down the stitches for the sleeves that's what the pattern calls for you knit the front and back I will first knit a sleeve and then the other sleeve and then I'll probably do the neckline and then I'll try and knit the whole yarn into the dress really excited how long this is going to be um, I decided not to put any pattern in there's no pattern there's no stitch pattern in the dress pattern uh, and usually I would have put something in but because the yarn is so busy with the five different colors um, that I decided just to stick with the simple stockinette quite unusual for me but really looking forward to this dress so that was the first new cast on and then the second new cast on are another pair of banana socks and I know last week I said I was done with banana socks <laughs> but then it turned out I wasn't and that's because I got the new opal colors that they came out with um, they were supposed to come out in January but I only got them last week and then when one of my customers saw this color oh by the way the series is called funny fruits so they all have some fruity names and this is actually called banana something uh, banana and stumpf it's like mashed banana and then she said oh that would be so funny as a banana sock and I, I thought that's the idea so I had to knit another banana sock and to be sure to make it quick I chose to make a really little one and I just had to add the brown uh, toe to this sock <laughs> this looks so much like a banana I think but I also brought a tiny sock blocker so this is German size 1718 so that's some baby size and this is what it looks like if it's a sock but I think it's so funny and I just had to knit banana socks out of this yellow yarn and this is what I have for the second sock have started it not finished it but uh, let's quickly go through the colors so interestingly enough there seem to be many blue and green colors in this series even though with fruit I would have thought there'd be more red and and uh, orangey colors but this is the only yellow orange then there's this beautiful pink purple bit of red color and then most of the others are either blue or green except for the gray one which has a bit of a blue touch to it a dark blue um, and then we have this bright blue with a little purple and we have a dark blue <laughs> so the dark blue and the gray they're very close um, and then we have a proper green which is very fruity I think and then we have a more bluish green and we have a proper turquoise color everybody guess which is my favorite color <laughs> just love the turquoise colors yeah so that's the new series funny fruits that arrived last week and I actually started a project straight away tiny banana socks um, and uh, yeah and then the last project as usual is the other knit along so the tiny banana socks certainly is part of my banana socks knit along and then the other knit along we're doing we're either knitting haramaki which can be worn as cowls or neck warmers or as belly warmers or sometimes it's hats if you don't knit brioche and um, I'm doing a two color brioche one I know I knit on it I added a bit to it but I think not very much so it's not a big difference from last week so I'll try and knit a little more on it this week but I'm not promising anything as usual we'll see how it goes but I'm looking forward to um, having this haramaki I think if I or the gray side out I could wear it with this pullover maybe it's a bit of a different gray than it's what's in the pullover but still it's both gray and red I'm quite uh, generous in combining my knits <laughs> I have to be otherwise I could never wear more than one piece probably <laughs> yeah so that's everything I had to show you today I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one